Welcome to another episode of How To With Paul Henderson. Today's episode is going to be on my one year follow up on my rhinoplasty that I actually had a one year one month ago today. So here we go, let's get to it. Today's date is August 5th, 2018. In this video I'm going to explain, um, I'll try to explain quite a few things like uh, why I waited so long to have it done, how much did it cost, did it hurt. I had some people ask me questions on Facebook um, over the past uh, 13 months and in person. Um, am I happy with the outcome? Uh, can I breathe better? So um, this is a, uh, so this video is going to be about like everything, pretty much like how I felt from day one or from before I had it done and until now. So uh, let me try to explain it as best as I can and uh, Hopefully I don't repeat myself because I do that a lot of times when I make these videos. And <laughs> so, uh, all right, so um, here's the first one. First thing I have to explain is uh, what's up with the bandage on the hand. I had um, a trigger finger release yesterday at about 8.30, that was Tuesday. And then of course my uh, rhinoplasty follow-up video or um, follow-up visit was uh, Wednesday, the following day, about 24 hours later. So um, what I'm going to do is as I tell you guys things, I'm going to write them down so that way I don't repeat myself. And uh, this video should turn out pretty good and hopefully it explains a lot. So uh, on, to the first, uh, on to the first item. My first visit to see a plastic surgeon, I was about 21 to 22 years old. Uh, I'm 54 now, so that would be uh, approximately 32 years ago. I've seen uh, four since then, uh, Dr. Payman Solomon and Dr. Jason Littner was of course the final plastic surgeons because they were the ones that actually performed uh, the surgery one year, one month ago today. And um, I'm really happy with the outcome. But uh, why did I see uh, four plastic surgeons before I had a chance to have it done? Um, one was the money because uh, of course back then I think they quoted me a price of like uh, $22,000 which uh, back then that was my first uh, my second job that I had and I was only making, uh, I don't know what I was making, but I think I was only making like maybe 200 a week. So uh, that was a little pricey and there were some other reasons why I didn't have it done those other three times. So I'll explain that right now. So the three first uh, surgeons that I saw, um, of course, when I was like 22 to 23 or whatever, whatever I was when I first went. And then of course, I think uh, I saw like about every 10 years I saw one, maybe uh, give or take a few. But the first three that I saw, um, said that they could only do an 85% improvement on the appearance of my nose, but they did say that if they did a full-blown rhinoplasty, not just a, a deviated septum surgery, they could fix my uh, deviated. They could fix my total deviation 100%. And uh, I really didn't understand why they could only do an 85% improvement. And uh, because every every time that you see someone who has plastic surgery, uh, of course, you know it always looks perfect. But the most, uh, the majority of people that have plastic surgery that you know of are, um, are always women. They get their noses um, straightened, they get them made thinner, uh, smaller, and uh, but they always look perfect. And now, now with women, you know, when uh, when they get these surgeries done, you know, there's going to be some scarring, most likely a little bit here and there. And uh, the normal person might not be able to see it, but of course, when you look in the mirror at yourself, you're going to see every little imperfection. Yeah, but with women they can put makeup on and highlight it and cover stuff up. You know, guys we can't. And uh, I don't know, I just figured that 85% uh, improvement just uh, wasn't worth the, the cost. And uh, so I didn't get it done. And uh, about two and a half years ago, I uh, went to go see Kaiser about having a deviated septum surgery. And now, of course, with a deviated septum surgery, they only do the lower portion. They uh, Supposedly they pull the lower bone, they make some incisions inside your uh, nostrils, they pull uh, some bones out and then they, they fix them and they put those back in and they uh, suture those incisions up that they made inside of your nose. And that usually corrects uh, the deviated septum portion. But with the deviated septum surgery they only do the lower portion. And I did talk to, uh, to that, uh, that, uh, that uh, nose throat doctor about having a, a full blown rhinoplasty done then. And they could have done it. They, he wouldn't have been able to do the plastic surgery part. They would have sent me to um, the Kaiser in LA and uh, they would have had a plastic surgeon there to perform the actual full-blown rhinoplasty. 
But once again, um, he told me the same thing that the first two doctors told me, that they can only do an 85% appearance improvement on, um, you know, on my nose. So I really just didn't really think spending the, the extra four grand that I would have paid then, I didn't think it was really uh, worth having my nose fixed because I didn't think my nose was that bad. So I went for the deviated septum surgery and uh, I just could not believe the difference that I could breathe with just having the, the lower portion of the deviated septum repaired. And I uh, haven't had one headache since. I could breathe a hell of a lot better. Um, I could sleep better. And I was with just the lower portion. So, of course, after I had that done, I was thinking, man, I should have paid the four grand and went to uh, went to L.A. and had the and uh, had the surgeon, uh, the plastic surgeon from uh, Kaiser, do it. So I kicked myself in the ass for that for that entire year. So since I was really happy with uh, the outcome of uh, the deviated septum surgery, I started thinking, you know, I should just go get the whole nose done. What the hell, right? So about a year later, um, I I started uh, checking around. Um, on the internet for a plastic surgeon. I uh, checked reviews um, of probably, uh, I found like six that I was seriously considering. So I went on their, uh, their websites uh, and on Yelp, checked out reviews. And the one that really caught my eye was uh, the plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills, um, well, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills. And it was uh, uh, two doctors at uh, Profiles of Beverly Hills. Dr. Jason Littner, Dr. Payman Solomon. Um, I just had a really good feeling about them. Um, they had some really good reviews. Of course, they had a few negative ones. You can't uh, please everybody all the time. But I'm a firm believer in that you read as many reviews as you can on, uh, on one item or about one company or one place and uh, see how many, you know, if the good to bad ratio is uh, you know, if you got like a few bad ones and oh, hundreds of good ones, then I think the bad ones are just people that just, some people just can't please and some people expect uh, way too much um, sometimes and they just uh, expect a miracle. Well, I wasn't expecting a miracle because um, I already knew what they were going to tell me and uh, so I made the appointment with the Profiles of Beverly Hills and uh, I went there, I had the free consultation, they took before photos, and um, I'll show you uh, the before photos in a, a few seconds. And you should be able to see a big difference. Um, I can. I mean, like I said, you know, uh, the person that's actually having it done, they're going to notice everything. Other people, you know, throughout the year after I had the surgery, people said, well, I don't really see a difference, and it, uh, I, I just, I, I don't get it, but... But that's them, and that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But anyway, so I went there to have it done, um, for the consultation, I mean. And uh, while I was there, well, before I got there, I was uh, about an hour early. So they have uh, on, the, on the main level, there's an actual coffee bar. So I went there. I was kicking back, having some coffee, a Danish. And uh, uh, the guy behind the counter, hey, what do you ask me? Like, hey, what are you here for? So I told him. And he goes, oh, you're going there? He goes, yeah, they're really good. And I go, really? I go, why? What'd you hear? And, and he told me some stuff. And he says, yeah, he sees, uh, he sees movie stars coming and going from there. And uh, people fly in from all around having them do work for them. So I was like, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good sign. If you got uh, you know people flying in from all over having surgery performed by those two doctors. And uh, you got movie stars going there. And um, I figured, well... If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. After my visit to the coffee bar, I went upstairs to see the two doctors, and um, the whole consultation took about uh, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. They uh, they checked my nose thoroughly inside and out. They took photos. Um, they showed me how crooked my nose my nose was, and uh, I had no idea that it was that crooked. And uh, when I saw the photos, I've uh, I've never seen an actual side profile of my face ever. I never knew that I had a bump and I didn't realize how thin my nose was in the, um, going down the middle. I knew it was crooked but I didn't know it was that bad. But anyway, you know, they took, uh, they took the photos and everything. They explained um, 
once again that uh, they can only do a 85% improvement. <laughs> and I told them that, you know, that's the fourth doctor to tell me that, and it's just, uh, I guess it's true. I mean, and so I asked them why. How come you can only do an 85% improvement? So they explained that uh, my facial structure isn't, oh, I can't remember their words they said. If they said it's, it's not asymmetrical or it is asymmetrical, no, it's not asymmetrical. My face uh, doesn't go straight up and down. My, um, my whole face is on like a, a small curvature. And uh, I think I know why. But anyway, I have one cheekbone higher than the other. Uh, my chin is just a little bit off center. So they said they can only do an 85% improvement, but they could uh, do 100% improvement on my deviated septum by repairing the entire deviated septum all the way up as high as it has to go. And I told them about uh, the deviated septum surgery that I had uh, like a year prior. And they said there's no problem. It's been long enough. They can go in there and they can still do the surgery. And uh, they'll just fix everything all over again. They did end up uh, putting cadaver bone uh, down the middle. So I, I, I had no problem with that. And uh, of course it's been a year and a month and you know, nothing's fallen off. So uh, after they showed me the photos and everything, um, they also manipulated the photos to show what it could look like and they did emphasize that this is just a, a computer rendering of what it could look like when we were done and <laughs> I think they must have mentioned it like three times they said that you know that your nose will not be perfect but it is going to look considerably better and uh, so after the consultation um, they told me how well before I left they told me how much it was going to cost and it was a uh, Originally, it was supposed to be uh, 10000 They had a, a sale going for 2000 off, so it only cost me 8000 But it wasn't so much the money, and uh, it was a lot cheaper than it was when I first went when I was like 21 or whatever. But I decided, you know what? It's about time. So I called them back a couple weeks later after I did some uh, serious, seriously, wait, after I did some serious uh, thinking about having it done and spending that amount of money, called them up. Told them let's do it. So I made the, uh, I scheduled the operation for the end of the year in September. So, no, in August, because that would be, once again, one year, one month ago. And uh, all I can say is I'm happy with it. So I'm going to show you uh, the before photos right now. As you can see by those photos, uh, as compared to now, uh, my nose was a lot thinner and it was pushed off to, I get really confused, uh, left side, right side, uh, because every time I see it, I look in the mirror, everything's reversed. I don't know, but anyway, I think it went off to the left. I do have a photo from 1990. I was, um, I think, uh, 26 years old. It's uh, from a cover of a Playgirl magazine that, uh, <laughs> that I was on. And as you can also see, I haven't really uh, changed too much since uh, 1990, and uh, I don't know. Was I in any pain? Zero pain. Um, the only time anything ever hurt was if I forgot that I had it done and I accidentally like hit the tip of my nose it, for like a second. That was about it. I took all my meds from, uh, I think I started taking one of the tablets the day before. And then uh, after the surgery, I started taking all the other ones until they ran out. And even after they ran out, I still had zero pain unless I uh, uh, just tapped the tip of my nose. Like I said, it only hurt for uh, you know a second, and that was it. It did look pretty bad. It looked like it should have hurt um, considerably. And as you as you will soon see from the photos, um, <laughs> it did look pretty bad. And uh, 
I kind of wish it would have looked even worse, but uh, but it didn't. And it, uh, it healed up pretty good. Um, the doctors were amazed. I'm still going through uh, the healing process. It could take anywhere between uh, one to two years and sometimes three. It all depends. And uh, he did say after today's visit, mine uh, is still healing. And I still have like a... So this is one year. So I go again uh, next year in uh, 2019. And then I see him again in 2020. And that's going to be about it for that. And if I want to see him ever again, unless I decide to get something else done, but I doubt it. <laughs> I think I'm, uh, I'm done with surgeries. So uh, let me see what else did I write down here. Um, did it fix my uh, deviated septum? Uh, yes, it did. It uh, fixed it totally. I can breathe 100% uh, better. Uh, like I said earlier in the photo, I mean in the video, I, uh, I sleep. Uh, so much better. I don't wake up with cotton mouth anymore because now I can uh, sleep with my mouth shut. So I get all the air through my nose. But of course my nose is drying out now a little bit and uh, they said that is normal. I still have some drying going on so I can use um, uh, nasal sprays if I need to. I can also get a humidifier that will keep uh, more humidity in the room so my nose shouldn't dry out so much. I also do a nasal flush to help uh, keep it clean inside there. That seems to be working really well. But all I, can, all I can say is uh, it was worth it, and uh, if I could do it all over again, I would, but I would do it a lot sooner. So I'm happy with the 85%, and, uh, and, it, and the reason why that I had this surgery done really isn't because I was vain. Of course, uh, other people seem to think different when they uh, go on my Facebook page because... <laughs> It's always me with some hot looking girl or something like that smiling or whatever so uh, but anyway I'm just really happy with the way it looks and I want to show it off and uh, I just uh, got to think of a few more things to talk about and then I'll uh, show you a, sli uh, a slideshow of from day one until uh, today the pictures that they took today that's if they already transmit them to my email if they did I'll download them and then I'll put those in there but I did take a series of photos from day one and then once a month after about uh, 14 days I took one right around the first week um, so I have about uh, uh, 13 sometimes I took a few extra but I'll put those all in a slideshow and then I'll show you what they look like so uh, then you should be able to see the transformation the transformation from day one until today I'm very proud of the way my nose looks and uh, and I'll say it again, I'm happy with the 85% uh, the way it looks. And I'm more ecstatic about the 100% improvement on my breathing because that's the main reason why I had it done. Well, that's what I tell people anyway, but <laughs> I just always hated my nose. I must have broke it as a toddler. It's uh, been broke as long as I can remember. And I, I did mention why my uh, facial structure is more out of whack than most people's. Well, I was born three months early. I was a preemie, so I was born at six months. Uh, the only thing that I can really uh, come to the conclusion of why my face is like really off center is that I probably slept on my face maybe um, right when I came out of the womb and they because I was in an incubator for uh, 30 days. So maybe they laid me on my stomach and then as the your bones were getting harder, you know, they laid me on it and then that's the way that it uh, it uh, it stayed. So that probably explains why my face is just the way it is and there's nothing I can do. Um, as long as I keep a, a, a goatee or a beard, you don't really see that my uh, chin is off center. And, uh, but uh, I plan on keeping this as long as I can or as long as uh, Just For Men stay in uh, business because that's where I get my hair dye from. I get it delivered uh, once a month. I get, a <laughs> I get two hair dyes and a, a beard and mustache dye. Of course I have some extra ones because I don't do it every single month but I do it on special occasions and I had to do it the other day and it makes me feel good so that's why I do it and uh, <laughs> there's really uh, not much more I can talk about but uh, so um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the slide slow uh, oh my god I can't even say that word I am going to show you the slideshow and then I think that's going to be it so um, just uh, here we go with the slideshow
As you can see by the slideshow video, there was definitely more than the seven daily photos and the once a month photos that I took um, for a year. Uh, but you get to, uh, so you got to see everything that I went through from the pre-photos all the way up until this morning. You can see the changes and uh, no, I was in absolutely like zero pain unless I touched the tip of my nose and that was it. And uh, it stayed numb for uh, maybe about six months it was numb if I touched it. It just uh, felt kind of funny. Uh, now it doesn't. Uh, another, uh, the other thing I noticed is that uh, I don't appear to be as nasally as I used to be. And like I said before, I sleep a lot better. I have more energy and I'm really happy with it. So uh, that's going to be it for the video. And um, I'm going to go ahead and do my closing thing that I always do. Uh, so here it goes. Uh, that's a wrap up for another uh, how-to video of Paul Henderson. And of course, this was my uh, one year, one month follow-up video to my rhinoplasty recovery. And um, one more thing, if, uh, if there's not something happy about yourself and you can change it and, uh, and you can afford to change it, go ahead and do it. Uh, I'm really happy with it. Uh, so um, that's it for my video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'm sorry I kind of like rambled on maybe a little bit too much. I'll try to edit some of it out. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And if, um, uh, if you like this video, I think I have another 20 or something on there. So just hit the subscribe button and you'll get notifications of future videos as they come out. And uh, that's it. Have a great day. And once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. And thanks for watching. And uh, <laughs> that's my uh, rhinoplasty recovery one year, one month video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.